Andrew is here, as is Evan. This is a huge recruiting weekend for Ohio State with Penn State. Before we get to some of the specifics with you, give me the way the weekend works when you're a Buckeye bringing in all these kids and it's time to show them a good time in Columbus. And, and how do they make sure, how does Urban and Pantone make sure that, that everything is taken advantage of? First things first, you got to realize that they, they are very expansive with their recruiting network. Um, when they get the guys in, everybody wants to come to the big game, right? I remember uh, when I was in recruiting, I think it was the Miami game at home after we had gone down there, uh, maybe lost or won, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but everybody is seeking, you know, the big game. So once you get there, they realize that they have a chance to witness something special and a chance to witness something that will push them over the edge and say, you know what, I want to experience that with a whole <laughs> bunch of guys that are, you know, look like they play for one another. So and I, I think that's the biggest take away from today and the, and the aspect of recruiting is the fact that you know these recruits will get to see the brothers that they'll get to play with they'll get to see people playing for one another and playing more importantly for something greater than it you know I've always said there's something about Ohio State that's an it factor and a game just like the Saturday is you know point blank or you know proven my example it's correct you know I mean it's, it's just a special place and when you get the chance to see it live and in person it's it's hard to say no to it, it was not a mistake that basically everyone was here right Absolutely. I mean this was everybody yeah. and uh, let's get to the nitty-gritty of this because we all want to know and we want to start with Emory Jones because this is a kid I mean I see him take the visit to Alabama mm -hmm. um, he, he's never decommitted he's still committed to Ohio State but at the same time we're nervous because yeah. we look at this kid and we go, boy you'd love to have him what, what do you how did Emory's visit go and and is he any more firm now than he was before See, it's honestly hard to tell because Emery is just, he's such a, uh, a reserved kid to the point that, you know, if you reach out to him, he's, he's not going to get overexcited or anything like that. He's not going to say this was the best visit ever. You know, he's just kind of taking it all in stride, especially with the four visits to Alabama um, recently. You know, he's, he's trying to compare Ohio State to what Alabama can offer. And Alabama's obviously closer to where he, grows, mm -hmm. or where he grew up in Georgia. And, you know, they're obviously the two premier programs in the country right now. So it's, it's just a sense of trying to figure out where he feels most comfortable. Do you have a lean at all? I know he's still committed, and yet we're worried about him, so it's a yeah. weird spot, right? Yeah, no, it is. I mean, I personally think that he's going to be at Ohio State. The whole time, all he's talked about is just wanting to make sure that Columbus was a place for him. And really, if you have Nick Saban in Alabama coming after you, I mean, that, that's hard to say no, course, at least yeah. to at least look into it and, and say, well, what do you guys have to offer? You know, either way, he's going to be behind five-star quarterbacks, you know, when he first arrives on campus. Either way, you know, he's going to be competing for national championships. It's wherever you feel more comfortable. And he hasn't really given us a sense of, of where he's leaning, but at the same time, you know, you get you get the, the sense that he hasn't decommitted, so, you know, it, it's hard to really tell. And that's something you mean, he's still committed, so it's, it's a weird yeah. tightrope we're going here. All right, give me some other kids who were on the fence that came in and you think that this weekend was a big one and swang them. Yeah, um, Cameron Babb, he's for as, as long as he's been on Ohio State's radar, everybody's expected him to come to Ohio State. He's had a great relationship with, uh, with Zach Smith, and, and it's built from there. Um, you know, I honestly expected him to commit this weekend, but he just kind of wants to take a couple more visits okay. before he does that. Um, and then, you know, there, there's not really a whole lot going on in terms of who's going to commit soon. At this point, it's, you know, you have the, the Under Armour game, the Army game. You know, those kids are kind of looking to take those as their advantage of when they're, when they're going to commit. Um, um, so at this time, it's just kind of getting them on campus, getting them more familiar with, with uh, the facilities, the coaches, stuff like that, and building toward that. That, that commitment time. Were there, were there comments from kids that you heard this weekend who were here that lead you to believe, I mean, you mentioned Bab, everyone kind of feels like he'll end up at Ohio State. Are, are there others that came this weekend that you've, if you're an Ohio State fan, you say, you know what, I think we're pretty good with, the, with this kid, this kid, this kid. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple underclassmen who you feel that way. Um, you know, you, you have Justin Rogers from Michigan. He's going to end up being at Ohio State's next two games at home as well. He's, he's an offensive guard. Um, you know, there's Jack Miller from 2020 quarterback. Um, a lot of people, including his old quarterbacks coach, have told me that he reminds him a lot of Carson Wentz. Yeah. So if, if you want to feel comfortable about Ohio State already, you know, or if you, if you actually feel bad about Ohio State being in this position with Emory Jones, you just look to next year's class <laughs> the, or the class after and say, okay, well, we'll just replace him with a four-star quarterback, five-star quarterback in two years. And is that really a bad situation to be in? Not, not necessarily. It, it's pretty astonishing when you think about. It. I always, when and when Urban first got here, I remember people telling me, I, you know, can he recruit anywhere? And I said, well, yeah, sure he can. He recruited Cam Newton behind Tim Tebow. Mm -hmm. So if you think about, you know, Burrow, Haskins, Martell, Jones, what's the kid's name? Jack Miller. Jack Miller. I mean, and, like. And, and even in there, there's there's a possibility of a, there's a quarterback in Texas named Grant Tisdale in 2019. So it's like you're literally just 
you're filling up the quarterback's room with with elite talent year after year and if you happen to miss on one you know one year it might not be the end of the world because eventually there's going to be a situation where is Joe Burrow going to have to transfer is Dwayne Haskins yeah. going to you know and it's like it's, it's a good problem to have it is but we really want Emory Jones yeah yeah we really want Emory Jones all right <laughs> I'm we'll, all see. Back. <laughs> we'll see you next week